For decades, they've called anyone who believes a fool. Encounters dismissed, sightings ridiculed. But now, undeniable evidence has been ripped from the shadows. Photos, smuggled from top-secret military vaults, offer chilling glimpses of a hidden reality. Could this be the moment the truth about alien contact is finally exposed? On November 15, 2020, well-known YouTube videographers Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers channel took an interesting clip shot from outside the restricted Nevada Test and Training Range, or the NTTR. The new video shows some common NTTR activity, including the camo dude, security personnel, the comings and goings of NTTR employee shuttles, and more interestingly, a lot of air activity over the region, especially at night. The video showed what is most likely a significant nighttime special operations tactical training exercise or capabilities tested at the Nevada Test and Training Range. Most interestingly, the scene appears to be lit by a series of LUU 19 BB infrared airdropped illumination flares for use with night vision devices. The video was 20 minutes long and shows a series of bright lights at low altitude as viewed through their infrared night vision video equipment. Visible in the video are a series of orbiting lights around the brighter descending lights. About specific tests and training activities inside the NTTR don't surface often. The US Air Force published an article on October 24, 2020, saying operations on the Nevada Test and Training Range are continuous. When one operation finishes, another is right behind it, ready to begin. The couple also caught a video of security vehicles and a large bus leaving the gated area distantly adjacent from where the action in their video took place. Now, it's impossible to tell what's actually going on exclusively from the video, but whatever it was, it was big and it looked interesting. All right, so this next photo is of Jerry Freeman uh, taken on a forbidden trip back in 1997. And his head here is supposedly covering the area where the secret S4 hangars are, according to the legendary Bob Lazar. So this guy had uh, quite the adventure uh, close to the forbidden military base. And according to him, he was actually within the restricted area at points, but uh, the exact borders of Area 51 aren't really shared with the public. So what's the story with this guy? Jerry Freeman, an archeologist, decided in 1997 that he was going to embark on a seven day trek into the highly restricted Nevada test site. The funny thing is about this case though, is that he really had no interest in what most of us would want to see behind the Area 51 curtain. Uh, he was just interested in tracing back the trail of the lost 49ers, pioneers who had traversed the area in 1849. He was in search of an inscription made by one of the pioneers, which was believed to be a Nye Canyon above Papoose Lake on the Nellis Air Force Base, totally off limits. Freeman spent days avoiding security. He slept with nothing but a blanket and the clothes on his back. He traveled very light, too light. He was running out of water by the end. And the funny thing is, is that after this dangerous trek, people were asking him like, so did you see Area 51? What's in there? Where are the UFOs, man? And again, just had no interest in that side of it. So he was like, uh, I think at one point I, I might've seen Area 51. Uh, he like climbed on a ridge above Nye Canyon looking down on Papu's Dry Lake, which is just south of Area 51. And he was like, uh, yeah, during the day I didn't see much, but one night I saw some lights. One looked like it was coming from a security vehicle. One was kind of stationary, but it seemed to grow and like shrink in size. Could have been a, a hangar door opening and closing. I don't know, it's an interesting kind of case. Number eight, Codename Hood. A book by Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base, Little Brown, tells the story of the famous site that has spurred tales and rumors of intrigue and cover-ups. Annie dove through thousands of recently declassified documents to reveal what happened in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s at the government-restricted area near Groom Lake, Nevada. In the book, there were some photos, and for this one, Annie said, the black device attacked attached to this balloon in Area 9 of the Nevada test site is a 74 kiloton atomic bomb codenamed Hood, the largest atmospheric nuclear weapon ever exploded in the United States. Standing on a ladder minutes before this photograph was taken on July 5th, 1957, Al O'Donnell put the final touches on the bomb firing system. Area 51 is over the hill to the right of the device, and on the next page and photo, Anne wrote a column of radioactive smoke rises from the Hood bomb. To the right of the mushroom stem, the landscape can be seen on fire. 
fire. Approximately one hour after the bomb went off, security guard Richard Migas drove through Ground Zero to set up a guard post at the Area 51 guard gate directly over the burning hills. Coming into number seven, we have the Paradise Trailers. Area 51 used to be colloquially known as Paradise Ranch in order to make it sound more appealing to families of workers. I suppose it's a lot to ask a person to relocate to the middle of the desert, so why not rebrand the place Paradise and make it sound more appealing? An image has been released of the Paradise era showing a number of trailers at the facility. Is this where families lived, or was it home to aliens? It's kind of cool seeing how things used to be in its heyday, assuming its heyday is over. We just don't know. All right, coming into number six, this is the big one. It is the alien autopsy. The alien autopsy was reportedly shot in Area 51 and depicts the aliens that were transported to the facility from Roswell after the 1947 crash. The crash was said to have been of a flying disc UFO and was said to have contained wounded aliens. The video was released in 1995 by Ray Santilli, who said that the footage had been supplied to him by a former military camera technician who wanted to remain anonymous, obviously. Let's have a little look at the footage, shall we? Ah, um, I mean, that is a dead alien right there, right? But like, is it? The footage absolutely blew up in 1995, but people were quick to call it a fraud. In the end, Santilli claimed that yeah, only part of the footage was real. He said that only a few frames from the original footage were there, but they were there. He also said the rest had been replicated and was a reconstruction of footage he had had, but was damaged. Sounds likely. Coming into number five, we have the Roswell Rescue. Footage claiming to be from the Roswell fallout surfaced on the internet in 2015 and alleges to show agents holding a corpses and taking them on a stretcher. Have a little look. I don't know, it kind of looks a bit sketchy, right? Can we get another look? Hmm, I guess it was 1947, so we can't expect too much film wise, but I'm not sure this is quite the smoking gun we were looking for. The video has had around 160,000 views on YouTube, but the like to dislike ratio suggests that some people may not be too convinced as to its authenticity. One of my favorite comments on the video comes from Mr. Saturday Night Special, who wrote, This has to be real. Everyone knows when you travel across the universe, you don't wear clothes. Just ask Chewbacca. He'll tell you. You're right. You know what? Are we the only species? species that like to cover our modesty? All of these aliens crashing, like where are their little alien suits? Come on. Coming into number four, we have Kodak confirms, allegedly anyway. In 2014, a UFO expert, sorry, a UFO expert, Tom Carey, was sent images from a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but claimed that she had worked with the Secret Service. The image was reportedly taken at Area 51 following the Roswell crash and seems to show a bug-like alien. Let's have a look, shall we? The image seems to support what a number of people who used to work at the Area 51 have said about the facility, including Robert Lazar and staff members from the esteemed Lockheed Martin firm. But like seriously, come on, is this an actual image of an alien? Can we trust anything in the age of Photoshop? It seems that Carrie thought of that and sent the image to Kodak themselves, who were able to confirm that it was taken in 1947. Again. Allegedly. If they sent him a letter saying this, then I haven't seen it. When speaking to the press, Carey said, What's interesting is, is that the film is dated in 1947. We took it to the official historian of Kodak up in Rochester, New York, and he did his due diligence on it. And he said that yes, this film strip and the slides are from 1947. It's 1947 stock. From the emulsion on the image, it's not something like it's been photoshopped today. If Kodak, did call this authentic? I haven't seen any certification. Coming into number three, we have another alien, of course. In 2012, Chicago videographer Adam Dew received a call from his former business partner Joseph Beeson. He claimed that he had something to show him, and boy did he. Beeson had a private disposal unit sister, and she'd come across a box of photographs that seemed to have been taken by someone close to President Eisenhower. He was in a number of the images himself, as were Bing Crosby and and Clark Gable. To 
two of the images she had been tasked with disposing were absolutely outrageous. Get a load of them for yourself. That's right, it is a small withered brown body of an alien in a glass case. And this was all among the images of the president, which is pretty crazy. The images were found in the garage of a woman named Hilda Blair Ray near Sedona in Arizona. Now the pair did believe that the images were linked to Area 51 and Roswell. They sent the images to none other than Tom Carey. Tom once again believed that the images looked just like what witnesses had described in the Roswell crash. Let's have another look, shall we? It really does kind of look like an alien wrapped in some kind of cloth, but unfortunately for Tom Carey, the image turned out to be of a mummified corpse of an Aztec child and not a secret leak from Area 51. Our final two, I have to say, are pretty convincing. It's not alien stuff, but I do think that these are secret pictures from Area 51. Coming into number two, we have the strange plane. Here's an image of something that looks like a strange aircraft, or something reportedly taken at Area 51 anyway. It is known that the United States Air Force is present at the facility, and several spy planes have been developed there, including the U-2 spy plane and the SR-71 Blackbird, and possibly others like the Rumored Aurora Project. So so, what is the plane in this image? I don't actually know. Could it be one of the alien aircraft that allegedly whistleblower Bob Lazar talked about reverse engineering? Or is it another spy plane? Finally, coming into number one, we have an image of a secret plane crash covered up. It seems an A-12 spy plane, possibly the one pictured above, crashed in 1963 after taking off from the secret airbase. The crash happened in Wendover, Utah when Area 51 pilot Ken Colmer was testing the plane's subsonic engines at low altitude. The pilot ejected from the plane crash, after which he was subjected to hypnosis and doping to make sure that he relayed the incident and how it occurred honestly and truthfully. Here are the previously classified images of the crash. Now, As you can see, vehicles raced to recover the wreckage, which was extremely sensitive to the United States Air Force. It seems a government sanitation team was deployed to remove all traces of the spy plane. To me, that sounds very, very strange. So too does it that they kept the images of this plane crash a secret for such a long time. Do you think it really was a spy plane that crashed, or given the response, something much more sensitive? Number 10, James Webb and the Big Bang. Okay, here we go. We'll kick off with some recent news. The James Webb Space Telescope has, of course, been blowing our minds casually for a couple years now. Since his departure up into space back in 2021, James Webb Space Telescope has been showing us these beautiful displays that we never dreamt of ever seeing. Stars so faint and so far away that until this point, well, we had no idea they were even there. For example, last week, the James Webb Space Telescope found new, well, rather old, galaxies that look like tiny red spots. Now, by analyzing the light emitted by these galaxies, astronomers can conclude that these galaxies were born 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. Now, these galaxies shouldn't be this old this far away considering they were born so soon after the Big Bang. Doesn't make any sense, shouldn't be there, shouldn't be that old. It's like seeing your grandma younger than you somehow. You're like, that's, no, timeline wise, that shouldn't make any sense. What in the Avengers is going on? Are these aliens before the Big Bang? We have no idea, this is a week ago. Comment your thoughts down below. I think it's aliens for sure. Number nine, ancient Sumerians. All right, we'll go old, but not as old as that red dot. The Mesopotamian civilization was formed in what's now Iraq and Kuwait. Now these civilizations began around the Neolithic revolution, so somewhere around 12, thousand BCE. Now they're sometimes referred to as the cradle of civilization because of course they're old. Mesopotamia was one of the first places to develop agriculture, being right in the middle of Egyptian and the Indus Valley civilizations. And of course we have to mention these ancient Sumerian tablets. Now in these tablets we start to question history. In 1842, British archaeologist Austin Henry Layard covered ruins of this royal archive, thousands of tablets made of clay, the world's oldest overdue library books, pretty much. Now these tablets showed Sumerians engaging in a social night with a scene that depicts a banquet from around 26,000 BC. It was the world's first bender, actually, if I'm being historically accurate. Ancient gods of Mesopotamia were said to have wings and the ability to control all of humanity. These gods were eight feet tall, or they could have been aliens from another planet. We Again, we don't know. Could be gods, could be aliens, could be neither. Drawings of a very tall man, like me, who knows. The Sumerians wrote one of the oldest tales in human history. It's called the Epic of Gilgamesh. So maybe these alien gods inspired them and inspired literature, who knows. I'd probably write a book if eight foot tall winged gods landed on my crops for sure. I'd write a journal or two. Number eight, 
The Madonna with St. Giovanni. All right, going back to some art for this one. In our history, even in our ancient history, there have been writings and paintings of the, well, potential extraterrestrial variety. As one example shows, the 15th century painting, The Madonna with the St. Giovanni, depicts the Virgin Mary. But also, in the background of this painting, features some sort of hovering disc-like object that looks, well, it looks a lot like a UFO, no? I don't know, I can't really describe this. This isn't the only example, however, as we've seen other sorts of otherworldly beings in ancient cave paintings and other Sanskrit scrolls. There are even some people who swear that it's also written in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, aliens are pretty OG. It certainly says something that potential alien sightings have existed since, well, that far back in our human history, so it must either point to proof of alien existence or just humans being obsessed with conspiracies of alien existence. I'm on the latter side. I really want aliens to be real, but I don't think so. I don't know. Next up, we have the Boyd Bushman photos. So Boyd Bushman is no longer with us, but he took with him to his grave many tales of the extraterrestrial friends he met as a Lockheed Martin engineer working within Area 51. At least that's what he claimed. In 2007, Bushman was filmed in a video talking with independent aerospace engineer Mark Q. Patterson about his experiences in the restricted area, claiming to have met several aliens, some of whom were hundreds of years old, apparently, and hailed from planet Quintumnia. He even said some of these Quintumniums were employees of Area 51. Held up a bunch of photographs. The video became relatively big, but I gotta say, call me crazy, these pictures look not great. That alien looks like it's from Spirit Halloween. Nothing against Spirit Halloween. I go every Halloween, but uh, not the most convincing. I think Boyd knew he was on the outs. He died not long after this interview, and I, I think he wanted to go with a little bit of a prank. Can't blame him. In fact, I respect him for it. Number six, Gabe Zeffman. Gabe Zeffman, a private pilot and amateur photographer, spent Christmas Day 2020 flying his Senesa 150 plane over Area 51 and snapping just over 1,000 photos. He captured stunning visuals of the Nevada Test and Training Range in Area 51, showing a mysterious triangle shape inside an open hangar. The hangar is just south of the main NTTR complex at Area 51, and the object looks large, although it is unclear. It does appear to be the only hangar that's open as well. In the videos of his flights posted on YouTube, Gabe can be heard getting clearance for his route over the restricted area. Now for this particular flight, he had higher quality photography gear that allowed him to capture better photos. So what's in the hangar? Seems like we may never know. Number five, the alien interview. So there's actually footage of this one, so yeah, not really photos, but I mean, isn't video better than a a silly old still photograph anyway. This footage was shown in a 1997 documentary entitled Area 51, The Alien Interview. And the big selling point here was that you were gonna see real footage of Area 51 employees in the S4 facility communicating with an extraterrestrial on camera. The man behind the film, simply known as Victor, narrates through the footage claiming to be former Area 51 employee and whistleblower who copied the footage, which was taken in 1989 before setting out to share it with the world. So you don't hear what was actually being said in the video. There's no sound other than the mysterious Victor re relaying the information over the footage, but you do see what looks to be your classic gray alien moving around and opening and closing its mouth. I mean, if it was just a puppet, there was definitely some effort put in here. And by that, I just mean they tried to make it look like it was moving. Number four, closest photos of the base ever. In 2017, Tim and Tracy of the UFO Seekers, who was mentioned before, hiked up the 1.4 mile high Tikaboo Peak, a mountain 25 miles opposite the mysterious military base, in order to capture the closest ever pictures of Area 51. From the peak of this mountain, the duo of UFO hunters used a special telescopic lenses to get the clearest photographs of the buildings and vehicles inside the top secret government site. The Area 51 pictures taken show what looks like a water tower, several complexes and vehicles moving around. Next up we have the UFO. In December of 2019, Nevada resident Steve Barron shared pictures and video of this mysterious object flying over a mountain range close to his home. So whatever the object is, looks big. It's far off in the distance, but it's very noticeable, very bright. Definitely doesn't look like the small specks you get in the sky with satellites. It's super bright again, and it moves in a strange pattern too. It doesn't move at one consistent speed or in one single direction. That's, uh, there's a point where it kind of looks like it could be a satellite. It's moving through the sky in more of a traditional pattern, just straight across. But then it stops, starts moving back in the direction it was coming from, and seems to clip along at good speed too. Like whatever this thing is, it's fast. So I don't know. Could be a drone. 
I suppose, but you be the judge. Number two, the aircraft. A passing commercial satellite seemed to have snapped its top secret next generation combat aircraft on the tarmac of Area 51. Tyler Rogaway of the War Zone was reviewing Planet Lab satellite photos on of the high profile secret site when he spotted something outside the ordinary. The highly classified United States Air Force Nevada testing facility is usually especially careful. Air operations are timed out during the gaps between Earth observation and surveillance satellites. Satellite overpasses. But in this photo, on the taxiway leading through a massive new hangar was a strange shadow. It appears to be a translucent tent. Inside is the outline of what appears to be an unknown type of fighter aircraft. Area 51 is always a popular spot when it comes to publicly available satellite imagery, Tyler wrote. When glancing at daily 3 meter resolution images of the base, we noticed the appearance of a roughly delta shaped blob on the north apron of the large southern hangar. It stayed there between January 26 and 20. 29th, 2022. So what was it? Why did they make this mistake? I don't know. Next up, we have the Area 51 entrance. So a few years back, satellite photos were shared online showing what looked to be a possible entrance to the ever elusive wonder that is Area 51. Someone was cruising around on Google Earth and spotted a road leading to a parking lot by the foothills of a mountain. Now, whatever this road leading to this parking lot uh, was actually built for, it wasn't there back in 1998, where satellite images of the same area showed there to be no road leading to this dead end area with the parking lot. So what's going on? It is pretty strange. Why have all these roads been built leading to a parking lot in seemingly dead end areas by the side of a mountain? There's, there's nothing there. It's not like, you know, they'd park there and then walk all the way back down the road to go somewhere else. No, it seems as if there is a secret tunnel that's been carved into the side of the mountain. I think Bob Lazar said something about uh, some mountain facility in Area 51. As for what's going on in there, your guess is as good as mine. The first image is a screen grab from a video filmed by a U.S. Marine officer on the 20th of April in 2021 on a military base in 29 Palms, California. After the release of the photograph, multiple Marines came forward to confirm the existence of an aircraft, saying that while the photo showcases only the triangle-shaped formation of bright lights, in person the men were able to make out the black body of the aircraft as well. The unidentified flying object is said to have hovered for 10 minutes in the air before it suddenly vanished without any trace. The men were able to rule out flares for being the cause of the mysterious lights, but were never able to figure out exactly what they saw that night. However, it appears the footage has not been taken lightly as the Pentagon has started an investigation into just what exactly was seen on the night of April 20th of 2021 in the skies above the 29 Bombs military base. Next up, we have a series of photos photographs taken by cosmonaut Ivan Vanger in August of 2020 whilst aboard the International Space Station that appears to depict five unidentified flying objects flying at the same speed while maintaining the same distance between each other as well as their surroundings, moving in a straight line just above the Earth's curved horizon visible in the night sky. Vanger, both surprised and curious, took to Twitter, now named X, to share the footage in hopes of getting some clarity as to exactly what he was looking at. In an exciting unfolding of events, his tweet was picked up by the Russian space agency Roscosmos, and a spokesperson revealed that experts were in fact studying the video in an attempt to determine what exactly Vanguard had managed to capture. Did you guys know that Japan was a major hotbed for UFO activity? Because I didn't. But apparently the Pentagon does? In fact, UFO sightings are so common in Japan that its military has reportedly ordered all pilots to disclose any and all identified flying objects directly directly to the Japanese government. Not only that, but Japanese self-defense forces have also undergone extensive training in relation to UFO sighting protocol. To date, six alleged encounters between pilots and UFOs have been reported to the Japanese government, one of which was recorded, and depicts 10 white circular balls flying through the skies of Osaka in Japan. While the government has yet to publicly comment on any of the incidents, the update of self-defense protocol alone is pretty telling. The next image was shared 
shared by a pretty reputable source, National Geographic. The image was captured by Sergio Loaiza on September 4th of 1971 during an aerial survey of Lake Cote. Everything seemed pretty normal until the photos were taken back to Loaiza's development lab where he noticed something very strange. A metallic flying aircraft, estimated to have a diameter of 160 feet, was located in the corner of one of the photographs. When he presented the photos to his superiors at the National Geographic Institute, they shut him down quick, forbidding Sergio as well as his colleagues from sharing any information of what they had seen that day. In 1979, however, the photograph was leaked, and the object that appeared in the image was officially classified as an unidentified flying object. In 2021, the existence of the object was again confirmed after the original copy of the photograph was scanned and it was revealed that the UFO's presence was more than just a scratch on the lens or a piece of dust in the wind. So what do you think it was? Let us know in the comments. Next. Next up, we have footage that comes to us straight from the declassifieds. Remember how I told you at the beginning of the video that the government quite literally copped to the fact that they have been hiding the existence of UFOs for years? Well, they did, and they came with receipts. On the 15th of January in 2023, while surveilling an MQ-9 Reaper aircraft, an unidentified aerial presence was captured, moving at speeds unreachable by any of Earth's modern-day technological advances. Not only this, but as the object whizzed through the field of view of the camera lens, it appeared to leave behind an atmospheric wake before disappearing completely into the sky. Guys, if you have any, please leave your UFO and alien stories in the comments. I would love to hear about your experiences with any of these kind of things. Number seven, the Nazca Alliance. We've all heard of alien crop circles at one point or another. I remember watching the movie Science when I was younger and well, then I couldn't sleep for 28 years. That's awesome. That birthday party scene? Never again. Thank you so much. Yeah, that scene. Remember that one? So scary, right? Aliens. Just 200 miles southeast of Peru, we can find hundreds of markings etched into the earth. Now, they're massive pieces of art, almost like crop circles, but, you know, without the farming stuff. More intimidating, more, you know, stone. The biggest ground graffiti spans over 1,200 feet, and you've probably seen it, hopefully not. Many believe that this was an ancient ritual for water, given its location. Well, that theory certainly checks out. Another theory, written in 1968 in Eric von Daniken's book, Chariot of the Gods, suggests that that ancient Nazca Lines was a site for ancient alien visitors. Like a landing pad almost. Airport, there it is, one of those. Leaving behind knowledge in the form of these massive doodles and, well, technology. Number six, the USS Nimitz. All right, I couldn't imagine a worse place to find alien life than in the middle of the ocean. Ugh, that's creepy. Although I will argue that an octopus is completely alien. That's messed up, they shouldn't exist. November 2004, the USS Princeton is a part of the USS Nimitz strike group and they noted this craft, a UFO, a UAP rather. That's what they're calling them now, UAP. Now at first they saw this craft not in the sky but under the sea. Which is interesting because the Go Fast video that we've always been looking at with that thing whipping through the air seems like it's coming from the ocean. The ocean is very unexplored so there could be a plethora of aliens just waiting down there. Who knows? I certainly hope not but who knows? A few moments later this white tic tac shaped alien craft came out of the water and a white tic tac shaped UAP, always egg shaped in history, that's always a fun sign. Then two F-A-18 fighter jets were flying above it and as earlier reports put the egg 80,000 feet above the water, so of course that's when they had to fly in. They saw it fly up, whip through the air, and then again, they saw it dip into the ocean with no exhaust, no infrared, didn't pick up anything, nothing like that at all. It just shot away at three times the speed of sound. Loop, underwater, gone. Can aliens go underwater too? That's a little bit OP, it's not fair. Number five, a mua mua. This one here has scientists and Reddit users all fighting alike. So just a few years ago, scientists all agreed that we had found an object that was flying through our solar system and they called it a mua mua. It was widely agreed upon that it was an interstellar comet that had somehow swung out from another star and ended up near us at a very high velocity. But upon closer examination, they realized that something was propelling this and causing it to accelerate. And this is when the debate started. A.B. Loeb, who is a Harvard University astrophysicist, proposed the idea that rather than a comet, this could be an alien probe that is being pushed by a light sail. A light sail is a very wide but extremely thin piece of material that could be accelerating this, you know, space cigar. Other scientists didn't agree with this. Fair, I mean more than fair. And instead they believe that this is possibly the hydrogen ice could have been melting off the object in a way that would mimic a rocket or something that can propel it in nature. But in August of last year, AB wrote in a study that hydrogen ice is too easily heated and it would have melted off long before this, long before it reached our solar system. So really don't know what's propelling this massive space cigar. So we think aliens. Do I think aliens? Maybe, I don't know, I'll never tell. Number four, flaming thing, Texas. I just watched Nope the other day and the idea of aliens in Texas or 
or aliens over top of a farm. You know that birthday party scene with the dude walking? It always gives me chills. I don't like it. Aliens love a good crop, apparently. Imagine opening the newspaper though in 1957 and right on the front cover you read, Leveling flaming thing brings world knocking at city's door. What does that even mean? What do I, how do I react to that? Back in 1957 in, of course, Leveling, Texas, multiple eyewitness reports began to flood in about an egg-shaped object, again, an egg-shaped object, or this circular flash of light. It was just jetting across Leveland skies. One witness recalls the object making a loud humming noise as it flew by, which is different than other accounts that we've heard about, you know, flying eggs in history. But this egg shape keeps coming back up. But this is an encounter where it's been reported as loud with a great rush of wind, which is, again, very different. Believable, but different. It was a loud egg, as opposed to a quiet sea egg. On top of that claim, the witness's car radio began to go haywire as it passed. The radio thing isn't too crazy. I mean, growing up, my computer speakers would always tell me if a text was going to come in. It's always so odd. I have no idea how that works still to this day. The Air Force ended up commenting on it. They said that this was just a phenomenon caused by electrical storms and not a space egg passing by. But do we buy that? Is that why we're here right now watching this video on Most Amazing Top 10? Giving it a thumbs up, subscribing? We want to believe in aliens, right? Let's do it. Let's move on. Almost there. Number three, Europa. One of Jupiter's many moons called Europa has a red tinge to it. And in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that this tinge, this little might be possible that alien microbes are responsible for this reddish color. Again, we saw life way out in the galaxy that was also a faint red. So red means dead? I don't know. Red means alive? Who knows? The surface of this moon is mostly ice, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and or compounds to make that data make any sense. But like something's red and there's life. Well, I don't know. I don't know how science works. That's my best uh, impersonation of science people. Uh, there's some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions and that also have that red and brown color, which could potentially be responsible for this color on the moon. Sort of space bacteria, ice bacteria, whatever. There's something living up there. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where these are all located. Some geological activity on the moon could push them closer to the surface where they then flash frozen in place. So they're warm under the water, then they go and they freeze. That's a horrible way to go out. A little space bacteria. Number two, O'Hare Airport. A UAP spotted in the airport. Worst place to see it, in my opinion. I sure it wasn't an airplane. Heard there's a few over there. The day was November 7th and the year was 2006. Flight 446 was gearing up with passengers and luggage, of course, ready to fly to North Carolina from Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. But the flight was a tad delayed due to the, you know, due to the hovering metallic craft hovering above all the planes. Yeah, can't really take off when that shiny ball is in the way. 12 United employees and others were just there to fly out. It was 4.15 p.m., so it wasn't at midnight. Nobody was tired. Nobody was delirious. It was clear as day. It was a business day otherwise, and everyone saw this. Witnesses watched it hover for around five minutes before it eventually zipped off back into the sky. It even pushed through clouds, so people say it wasn't a balloon. This report was one of the most read stories on the Chicago Tribune's website. I mean, of course, it's about aliens, but eventually it was deemed a weather phenomenon, because why, of course it was, wasn't it? The UFO was not seen on the radar or any radar for that matter, so now we're just gonna go off what people said that many years ago. Although last week we saw three balloons and have no idea what they were, so we'll never find out at this rate. And finally, number one, 2021 UFO. February 21st, 2021, a blogger was using a radio scanner to try and pick up the feed from an aircraft, but they received much more than they ever expected. They intercepted the transmission of the wrong aircraft, but at the right time, it seems. As an American Airlines flight was headed from Cincinnati to Phoenix around 1.20 p.m., the pilot came on the radio radio to ask a question. Do we have any targets up here? Also, what an odd question to ask while you're flying. The voice continued. We just had something go right over top of us. Now, after this, he followed up with, I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast over top of us flying. Yeah, not, not where you want to see anything in the air around you. You don't want to see anything that looks like that in the air. No, that's so scary. Not only were FAA air traffic controllers not able to see any object in the area on their radar scope, but they still have haven't been able to identify what that could have been. Just a rogue something flying by. Nice, that's common. Glad I went flying yesterday. But this does happen more often than any of us really know. Like I said, we had three balloons pop up and we have no idea where half of them went or what happened to them. But it's possible this object could have been part of some sort of covert military or Navy operation, but it certainly raises some alarm bells. We don't want to do any tests beside a, a swoosh airline. Probably not dangerous. Uh, dangerous? Probably not safe. Coming in at number 10, we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost 
and the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB 152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is 1,400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Coming in at number nine, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible, and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft system development and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long exposure, all the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable. Joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble, and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number eight? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Next up, we have arguably the most beautiful alien assuming photograph I have ever seen. The photo was taken in 2004 by a retired Royal Air Force officer while on vacation in Sri Lanka. The site was described as some kind of colorful giant donut in the sky with hues of oranges, pinks, purples, and whites. After its capture, the photograph was turned into the Royal Air Force Flying Dales base in North Yorkshire in England, where it became a classified document held by the Ministry of Defense. The image has since been declassified, of course, and is now available for public viewing, but there is still a lot of mystery surrounding the photo as well as the photographer, as his identity, along with any other information regarding the incident, is pretty much non-existent. I mean, come on, it's a giant glowing light in the sky. You're really telling me no one else saw this and that there's no other information out there other than the fact that the photo exists? Oh, yeah, and not only that, but it was deemed classified by the British Ministry Ministry of Defense, so I'm thinking there's something else going on here. Okay, I bet you didn't know that another major hotbed for extraterrestrial UFO and unidentified aerial phenomenon activity was Brazil. I mean, I did, but maybe you didn't. In fact, this kind of thing is so popular in Brazil that they have an annual day of recognition for these sightings known as the Night of the UFO, which came to be after a major event took place in 1986. On the night of May 19th, a series of unidentified flying objects were seen in the skies of Brazil, and even more non-visual objects were detected via radar across the skies of four Brazilian states. Of course, at this time, any and all knowledge the government had on the event was extremely classified. In May of 2012, however, Brazil's Freedom of Information Act went into place, after which the public demanded the release of all the documents relating to the incident. The government complied, and not only released written documents of the events, but also a series of photographs depicting strange activity within the skies above Brazil. Although the images of what appeared to be nothing more than squiggles and clouds of smoke didn't provide much clarity, a statement made by the Minister of Aeronautics did. He said, This command is of the opinion that the phenomena are solid and reflect, in a certain way, intelligence, due to the ability to follow and maintain a distance from observers, as well as to fly information. After this statement was made, the Brazilian government has still not been able to confirm exactly what took place the day the night of the UFOs 
was born. Next we have a photo taken in 1990 by two Scottish chefs who were working in a hotel near the area in which the photograph was taken. After a long day of work it appears the two men had decided to take a hike in an attempt to blow off some steam. While this walk wouldn't end up being incredibly relaxing it would be wildly exciting as not long after the two men had set off on their journey along the Calvine Scottish countryside they noticed something hovering above them in the sky. The object was not one that either of the men could identify and so they pulled out their cameras in an attempt to document the 100 foot flying aircraft instead. The photos, which have been analyzed and show no signs of manipulation, capture the object being circled by a jet plane. They thought the incident was incredibly strange and even newsworthy, so the two turned the footage over to the local newspaper for publication. But the images were seized by the British Ministry of Defense and were never released. Until 32 years later, that is, by David Clark, who, unbeknownst to the ministry, had kept a photocopy of one of the original images. The identity of the two men was never revealed, nor did they ever come forward to share their story after the images had been seized by the ministry, begging the question of what exactly they saw and what exactly the government was trying to cover up. A photograph taken of an unidentified aircraft lit up by military spotlights in Los Angeles, California is next on the list. The photograph, which documents an event so big, it later became referred to as the Battle of Los Angeles or the Great Los Angeles Air Raid was taken on February 23rd of 1942, just two months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. On the night the photo was taken, all of Los Angeles was under blackout, as directed by the US military. While the lights on the ground had been turned off, the sky above had been lit up by a myriad of strange objects. The military opened fire, and onlookers stood absolutely stunned as 1,400 rounds of ammunition appeared to have no effect effect on the unidentified flying object. Smoke filled the sky and when it cleared, not a single craft was to be found in the sky or on the ground. Shrapnel that appeared to have ricocheted off the target resulted in the death of five civilians. Furthermore, three were killed in car accidents due to the chaos of the event and two more of heart attacks due to the stress of the two hour long attack. And finally, we have a handful of screen grabs from a video taken by Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich whilst flying an 18F Super Hornet fighter jet over the Pacific Ocean near San Diego during a training mission for the United States Navy. The footage, taken in November of 2004, was captured after Dietrich was asked to investigate a suspicious object that had been seen dropping from 80,000 feet down to the surface of the ocean and then vanishing. When Alex and their colleague arrived on the scene, the ocean surface, where the object had been reported, appeared as though it was boiling. Moments after arriving to investigate, a strange, elongated white object came into view and was captured on video hovering above the water before it disappeared into the sky at an impossible speed leaving no wake in the oceans below. While the footage has been confirmed to be authentic by the United States Department of Defense, the object itself, along with its origins, remains a mystery. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. 
What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting. And the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? Coming in at number 7, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claim that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies, and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. UFOlogist and hoax. Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number 6. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realise how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? US UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number 5. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up Death Eaters waiting to suck out my soul. But actually, they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. Knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck out my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this x-ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X-ray Observatory in 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? Because it kind of looks like you know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now a lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but I'd love to know what you think. Ah, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number 3. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A Rudy nudie alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. Analyzing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. 
skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally, at number one, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fuel to conspiracy theorists' fire over the past 40 years. That was since the picture was taken in July 1976. The snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is two miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now, the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars Orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. Coming into number 10, we have up close and personal with Area 51. In September 2017, YouTube channel UFO Seekers did just that. They sought UFOs. What did they find? Well, you will see. Tim Lee and Tracy Doyle hiked up Tikaboo Peak, a 1.4 mile high mountain, 25 miles opposite the military base. The duo used telescopic lenses to get the clearest possible photos of the secret base ever taken from outside by just a civilian. Although you can't see little aliens running around or anything, there are plenty of vehicles to be seen, plus an expansive building and water towers. It isn't too scary, but the video is super interesting how they got there and everything, and actually it's quite tense. Had they been caught by authorities taking long lens images, then they really could have been in trouble. The video is 18 minutes long, but here is a clip of the YouTubers finding the base. The video has had over 2.4 million views. Perhaps the Kyles are watching it to swat up for their attack planned on the 20th of September. Kyles. Coming in at number 9, we have even closer, if you can imagine it. This is one of the closest ever images taken of Area 51. It was taken from a light aircraft and is in the Nevada Aerospace Hall of Fame right now. Here we can see a much closer overview of the whole compound, something that would have been classified just a few years ago. Coming into number 8, we have the airstrip. In 2013, some documents about Area 51 were declassified, although many criticised the response to the Freedom of Information request to having been underwhelming, featuring heavily redacted information. Nonetheless, in 2016, the US did permit Google Earth to photograph the area, which had previously been a no-fly zone. Now you too can view the facility from a bird's eye view. You can check it out and see what's going on, although from very high in the sky. From browsing Google, around 12 miles north of Area 51, there seems to be an unexplained airstrip coming in at around one mile long. There is also a visible cluster of buildings at the end of the strip, which is kind of baffling. We've got no idea what's being tested here. According to Intel from the website Life Science, though, it is thought that the space could be used to test reconnaissance drones. In our seventh spot, we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. 
Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights, and I quote, First one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine, but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51, taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long, or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. What do you think though? Is Boy telling the truth? Are those real photos of UFOs? Let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy this video about mysterious alien photos that were found in mysterious military bases? Well, let's check out some more rare photos from history that prove aliens are real. Click the video now.